Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It is Francesco here. So guys, welcome to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. We are doing a full tutorial of Hive today. Hive is touted as the home for busy teams. It's a project manager and we're going to be uncovering some of the features, functions and whether you could use it in your daily routine. We also have a exclusive discount which we're going to apply near the end of the video. So do stay tuned for that one. Uh, you can use the timestamps below to find out all of the different areas and features features that you want you can skip ahead to those but it's going to be a full outline of the application now i just wanted to thank the sponsors which is hive hive did uh, a full sponsorship here on the channel which is great it's awesome to have them support the channel it helps us grow helps us build the technology and also uh, obviously review as many applications as possible for you guys to go and dive into so let's get started. Hive is a project manager. This is the application and this is the Mac version. They have a web version, iOS version, Android version and a PC version. So it's quite comfortably available on desktop and mobile, which makes that really accessible. Now, what I'm also going to do is include a few resources that I've uh, found very helpful. So, for example, Scott Friesen's video on simplicity all about how he compares it to Asana. And they do have a comparison to Basecamp, Asana, Trello, and a couple of other resources um, that I'll include in the description below too. So as you can see, this is the, the what you land on when you have your uh, Hive account. Uh, I've got one working here and I've made a few mock-ups of the experience. So let's start with this left-hand panel. Now the goal is to combine uh, chat functionality, so chat in team, uh, and also uh, direct chat too between people, as well as the project management side of stuff, so that you've almost connected the two experiences. Now, the sort of core experience that a lot of people uh, love when they get started with uh, Hive is actually the views, the actual layouts that you can use for a new project. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new project to demonstrate this. So creating a new project is really easy. So for example, let's say I wanted to uh, run Facebook ads as that project. You can obviously add a project color over here. Let's choose blue for Facebook, uh, a little bit of a turquoisey blue. Let's add a date to the project. Um, uh, let's say we want to really get the ads out by October the 6th, and that's a Sunday, I know. Uh, and you can have here labels too. I'm going to put it as client work um, as a label there. You can add a description. So we're going to put it here, for example, uh, run Facebook ads for, a, for client A for two weeks and you can add any attachments uh, uploading from some of the popular services there we'll talk about that near the end when we spoke speak about integrations you can have a parent project too so if there's an existing project then it comes under a smaller project inside that bigger project then you can do that too and you can also break it into phases which helps you to structure the gantt layout um, so for example let's say uh, i want to research these ads before um, and then put together the uh, copy and creative and then launch the launch ads there so that's the three phases you can obviously move them around delete them uh, and even add more phases to them so let's go to the next area you've also got the option to share with just you so if you want to be able to use this as a personal project you can you can use it with specific people which i'm going to do in this case and you can edit the permissions of this and you can have this one as an all members access you can create a group conversation on the uh, project as well. So this should appear in this left-hand panel, making it a great way to start the conversation about it. Now you've got a host of different views, and this is what Hive is very much known for. You can choose a range of views from status view, so being able to track the status of each action, the team view, so seeing it, who's delegated to each team member who's been assigned the work, a calendar view to showcase the dates, a label view, uh, good for labels when you add them all to the tasks and a Gantt view. I'm going to choose a Gantt view in this case because it's a good way to visualize it. You can also view it in table as well. Uh, very helpful. So you can group by either project, label or phase, but I'm actually going to group it by phase for now, uh, which we actually created there. And I'm going to say no to showing weekends because obviously uh, that's uh, not necessarily important to the timeline, but that's totally optional. So one thing you saw there is a group was created in this left-hand panel. So if I wanted to, I could uh, communicate with the team in this group. I could attach relevant stuff as well as send messages, links, and all the good stuff that you normally do. Um, and also, you can at mention people as well. 
um, different users. Uh, so you could say, uh, can you check this? And there we go. Uh, you can uh, obviously add that person to the group and do all the regular stuff that you do and emojis and things like that. So if I wanted to remove this left hand panel whilst I'm doing the work and planning, you can see here that I've got different phases uh, and actions below them. So obviously this uh, phase will hopefully uh, be something that you can get started with. So here we go. You can start adding a few research projects. So let's say uh, explore the target market before we do this. Uh, and let's say one more item of uh, re uh, explore research copy pieces copy from competitors and as you can see these tasks are being created now if I wanted to I could drag them up and down but if I wanted to simply just place them out on the area I could do so and you can see here that that task has been created I could do the same with this one if that's obviously a de uh, dependency to there you can see that research spans between the 18th of September to the 26th um, and uh, you can start doing those to the bottom so I'm going to add a few more here Okay, so here we go, I've added a few tasks, and as you can see, they've been broken down into phases. You've got the research phase, the copy and creative phase, and the launch phase, as well as a lovely timeline view here. Now, for example, if I wanted to see this in a different sort of view, I could click weekly view and see that in a bit more detail, and that's quite helpful. You can uh, obviously group it by project if you wanted to, so you can actually see a sort of outline of the different projects that you've got going there. Uh, and obviously that will set it up there. You can also use labels too, but obviously don't have any labels attached to it. But phases makes a great deal of sense right now. From here, you can also see the detail of the project, who's been invited, uh, also the project description, any attachments. You can also copy a project and use it as a template essentially. Use custom fields, delete project, get link for project, and lots more there. Now over here you can use filters as well to uh, obviously filter per assigned. Uh, there's nothing assigned just yet. You can filter by labels and status too. So the good thing is you can use the change layout function as well if you wanted to at any given point move this to a different view. So for example if I wanted to move this to the calendar view you can see that from here I can see all of the activities as well as click into the items as well as being able to see all of the information there. Now let's just go back to that Gantt view. Uh, what you can do in Gantt view is also use the assigning function. So for example, if I was like, okay, start assigning things to people. Um, I'm going to invite a team member here. You can obviously add uh, external or internal team members. I'm going to add, you can either add full groups or those uh, invited to all of the different activities. So some of the final things, you can also change the due date here as well as export this if you wish to and actually hide the assigns on the export as a PDF, PNG uh, or MS project. Now of course this is a great view for being able to activate stuff but you can use any of the other views. The Kanban view is obviously something that you can get started with. This is what it looks like as a team view. So if I was like I just wanted to get them assigned uh, to different people then I could do so. And if I headed back to the Gantt chart view, everything would be assigned to the relevant people. So here's another worked example. We did this one just for example Skillshare course. And you can see here that you can visualize everything out in the open, which is quite a nice view. It's one of my favorite views, I'd say. You can see a yearly view if you wanted to, if it was a much longer project. Um, but obviously that's one of the exciting things. Okay, so if it got to that point where you wanted to use a templates function, all you have to do is go up to the team area and click your workspace, head over to templates and actually create an action template. This is very useful if you're recreating a process. So for example, let's say I wanted to reuse the, uh, the blogging side of stuff and use uh, some regular processes that you use for blogging. So for, for example, write blog post, proofread, push the website, sanity check. Uh, you can use all of the, uh, obviously create your own template and then be able to add the dependencies as well as the due date too which is very helpful because you can apply it to a new project inside of this and then once you've added this obviously what will happen is it will uh, become relevant to the due date that it happens. So for example let's say you uh, posted this one in your uh, actual workplace you can obviously get it three days after the existing date. Now you can add description, add any steps, add any attachments and also assign it to certain people in the group too. So if you want to add a new process uh, then you can do so and you can add as many action templates as you like. 
So you're probably wondering, how can I view all of the task information, add more context to a task and really get going with it? All you have to do is click into a project and of course you can see the task view, you can see what projects it's attached to, the actual stage of the project, so in this case it's the phase, you can add description, you can add subtasks as well as change the due date and information around it. You can add the status of the task which helps you to view it in status view, so if I click in progress and you can apply a, a new template to it. So for example, if I was like, okay, I want to apply a action template to it, I, as you can see, it all pops up here as a uh, sort of template view and uh, obviously saves you a lot of time. Now here you can add labels, you can add attachments from the relevant services, Google Drive, Dropbox, Box, OneDrive, a link to share Drive, as well as any files and information you want. You can market this private to be uh, viewed as yourself and you can add a priority level to it too. Now one of the experiences that you can use is very simple to similar to SurveyMonkey. You can use forms. You can create a new form to be able to share with other people. So this becomes a bit of a workspace application too uh, and it's a very useful function. It works in a very similar way to Google Forms but you can create and share out new forms there. This is great for collecting information internally and externally. You've also got the resource management center, which has only been recently added. But for example, if you wanted to start applying different uh, resource assignments to them, so for example, uh, to be able to allocate them certain times during the day or a total amount of hours to a project, then you can do that. Uh, you can also add time off here. So for example, if you wanted to add time off for this person here, you can create that time off as well as extend it if you want. So that's eight hours a day uh, for four days. So you can visually see all of what your team resources are being spent on. Uh, you can use uh, that view in people and placeholders too. Now, if you want to view the project navigator, you can see any active or archived projects in the past and actually see all of their information at a glance. You can create new projects here, but the real magic is being able to use uh, the My Actions area because My Actions allows you to see all of your activities from now and future tasks coming up as well as the completed items you already have. And you can add personal tasks here. So for example, you can uh, obviously make these private. So for example, you can see here it's marked as private, but this can be your personal item. And obviously you can move it up and down the list as well as add priority levels to it there. So as I was mentioning, you can use file sharing. So file sharing is really accessible up here. So once you connect your account, obviously Google login, so you can connect that there. You can use Box, Dropbox or Microsoft. That's one note there to be able to connect regular apps that you use. There is an analytics experience in this. It does analyze your team productivity, although this is only available through the enterprise package, but you can see a real unique view of your data and how you can be more productive based on your existing data and give you an outline of where you can improve. So this is something that they've recently brought in. So some of the standout functions of Hive are that it is very flexible. You can use it with lots of different layouts and views. There are some really exciting functions in the task actions area, as well as being able to create a range of things. You know, you've got the ability to create forms as well as create action templates, see analytics and use some of the Hive applications. You can also import tasks and there are a whole host of functions inside of settings, which makes your account a little bit more accessible. Now you're probably wondering when it comes to price, how much is this? application it is $12 per user per month on the professional plan which gives you access to the majority of features it is there is a 14 day free trial on this one there is no free edition although the team have given me 25% off discount using the keyword or coupon code keep productive and you can get 25% off your first 12 month on hive so that's really exciting guys um if you want to check out that application you can do that below uh, obviously, I'm really grateful for Hive for sponsoring this week here on the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Naturally, uh, hopefully they'll be back soon to do another sponsorship. Anyway, guys, a big thank you for stopping by today. Hopefully, this gave you a nice outline of the application. Of course, there are loads more detailed functions inside this, and we'll be doing more features on it in the next few months. Anyway, guys, big thank you for stopping by today. Make sure to have a great week. Keep productive, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.